folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm tickled to death you joined us today. We're going to talk about starting high risk calves on feed and some of the new management techniques, maybe some of the new products. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned and enjoy the show. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Doc Talk, brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick. In Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. I'm at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine and I'm the director of the Beef Cattle Institute at Kansas State. And I'm lucky enough to get to host this show and spend some time with you. And today, we're going to talk about something that occurs every year in the beef industry, and that's managing high-risk cattle coming into whether it's a grow yard, a stalker operation, or going into a cattle feedlot. High-risk cattle are cattle that, in my opinion, are mismanaged from the cow herd. These are cattle that are weaned on the truck. They don't know what a bunk is. They don't know what a water tank is. They haven't been vaccinated. They're not dehorned. They're not castrated. They're not prepared for the transition from the cow-calf operation to the feedlot. And, and there are two things that make an animal sick. One, an overwhelming dose of a pathogen like IBR virus or BVD or, or, or a bacteria like, like Mannheimia hemolytica. Or we have a suppressed immune system from stress. Whether it's not being prepared and winding up at the feed yard where you're at a place where you don't know where the food's gonna come from, or you, you, the, we're gonna castrate those calves, all of these things will increase the amount of stress that these calves will face when they come into the facility. So, the first thing I think about is when we unload these cattle into a feed yard, I'm looking at that receiving pen. And the receiving pen is the place where we're gonna keep those cattle from the point in time that they're unloaded until the point in which we process them. And, and that facility needs to have some place for cattle comfort. We need to have, make sure that if it's hot out, we have shade. If it's cold and wet and damp, we need to have some mud control and need to make sure that these animals, because the first thing that calves, high-risk calves coming off a truck from long haul want to do is they want to lay down and they want to rest. So, so it's almost as important as our vaccine is making sure that we give these animals a comfortable place to lay down. In the bunk, I want to fluff up hay. I'm going to take hay, I'm going to fluff it up in the, in the bunk. It's something the calves recognize as food, they see it, and they can, they can identify it. The other thing I want to make sure of is water tank. And a lot of times when we think about water tanks in receiving areas, we don't think about necessarily, we think about the amount of, of space we have. And if you don't have enough space from an automatic water tank and it's hot out, we need to roll a silver tank or something with some increased linear water tank space into that pen so that those calves can get around there and, and get a drink. The other thing is, is making sure calves can identify where the water is. Calves use the three senses to find water, sight, smell, and hearing. You can turn on a pick cock on a water and calves can hear the water rolling. You can pop the plug and sometimes I'll clean out the water tank and form a little bit of a water bog in front of that water tank so that calves recognize that that's water. And the other one is when the pit cock's rolling or the mud's formed, they can smell that water as well. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna to go to commercial. When we come back, we're gonna talk about moving those cattle from the receiving area into the processing area. When we start talking about the processing area, we're talking about improved cattle handling, low stress cattle handling, facility design, the products that we're using, and how we're gonna move those cattle through as being the welcome wagon for that stalker, backgrounder, feedlot operation. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back right after these messages. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. <coughs> Turn to a Central National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be in good company. 
They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand ag professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC and your hometown since 1884. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Tall Grass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tall Grass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Doc Talk, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and today we're talking about managing high-risk cattle. And in my past experience, whether it was in private practice where, where I was a feedlot consultant, or whether or not I was spending time with, with starting our own calves on feed, as you can see here from some of the experiments we do here at K-State. Low stress cattle handling and moving these cattle properly through a cattle feeding facility at the time of process is, is super important for alleviating stress. Once we get those cattle to the feed yard, and, and generally the first question people would ask me is, when should I process cattle relative to arrival? And my general rule of thumb is for every hour there on the truck, I give them an hour of time to rest and recuperate. So if we have short haul cattle or local cattle that we bring in from, from local auction markets, I may process those cattle right off the truck and, and go right into the processing barn. The other thing is if I have cattle that are coming from the southeast, the northwest, south central Texas, wherever, and those cattle are on the truck for, for 20 to 24 hours, those animals are gonna get a day in the receiving pen to drink water, rest, get some hay, and get their energy level up so that when we work those calves, they go through the processing barn and we kick them out into their home pen for, for the receiving period. So, we decided now we're gonna process these calves. They're gonna come through the processing facility. And one of the things I really encourage people to do is get online, whether it's, it's at the Beef Cattle Institute or at grandandlivestock.com, or, or Daniel's Manufacturing, and, and, and talk to Tom Knopfsinger, talk to Kip Lucas Savage, talk to Temple Grand, and people within the industry, there's a lot of expertise out there in designing the facilities properly. I know that good cattle, handling, good cattle handlers can move cattle through any facility low stress. However, if you have turnover, or if you have people that maybe aren't as astute cattle handlers, the facility can make a huge difference. And, and regardless of your level of cattle handling, having the proper facilities, the proper design, is huge for moving cattle through these, through these, these facilities. Some of the ways that you can tell whether or not you have good low stress cattle handling or not, is look at how the cattle exit the chute. If they're exiting the chute, more than 25% of them, with their tails up running, because somebody did something bad to me back there or something back there spooked me, I'm getting out of here. That can be in a, some way of a understanding objectively about your cattle handling. You should not be using a hot shot on cattle more than 10% of the time as set forth by the beef quality assurance practices. So these are some things that you can measure on your own and just looking and seeing how cattle are flowing through the facility is really, really important. We're gonna uh, shift gears from cattle handling to, to what products we're going to use at the processing barn and what we've done with some of our survey work here at Kansas State when we've interviewed some of the practitioners that are handling these high-risk calves on a day-to-day -day basis and that gets back to some of that management it gets back to some of the things that we've talked about as far as new technology new vaccines new drugs stay tuned we really appreciate you watching Doc Talk, and it's going to be more right after the break Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, it's Dr. Dan from Doc Talk and Ag AM in Kansas, and that's my farm. Be sure to stop in and join us at the Kansas State Fair. We're going to be down there, we're going to be walking around, we're going to be in the birthing center. Join us, come say hi, we can't wait to see you. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. 
and at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Doug Ford is the owner of Beaver Creek Veterinary Clinic, located in Brush, Colorado. He is also a partner in Production Animal Consultation, a science-driven, people-focused group of advisors serving animal protein producers worldwide. Doug and his wife, Jan, are the proud parents of five adult children, and as a family, they are passionate stewards of their ranches and livestock. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, Inc. Today we're going to talk about taking care of your syringe and cleaning it after you get done. First thing you want to do is take the syringe and clean the outside with warm soapy water, get all the manure and, and different things off of the syringe. Then you're going to take the syringe apart to clean the inside. On the inside of the syringe, never use soap. Only use warm water to rinse that inside of the syringe out. We're going to let the syringe dry, and after it dries, we want to put it in a dust-free environment. One of the best places, put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it in your freezer. But before you use the syringe for the next time, Make sure that you allow that syringe to warm up to room temperature. That's today's BQA tip of the day. is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey there folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University and today we're talking about high risk cattle and management and we've talked about moving them from the receiving area through the processing facility and now they're in the chute and we've got to make some decisions on things that we're going to do and we recently did a study when we interviewed veterinarians or did a survey that, that asked veterinarians that, that are handling a lot of these high-risk calves that was published in Bovine Practitioner Journal about what are some of the things that they're recommending as far as vaccinations and, and therapies for cattle that are that are mismanaged or these high-risk calves as they come into the feedlot. And we'll start out the first thing with is, is castration and castration technique. And what the veterinarians indicated that as animals got bigger, as we moved from the 300 pound bull to a 500 pound bull to an 800 pound bull, as the increase in in weight increased, we moved from more of a surgical castration with the lighter weight group to more of approach with banding on the heavier weight or larger, larger cattle or, or animals that are bigger that are still bulls on arrival. The key to bulls on arrival is making sure that we don't have them arriving at the feed yard intact. We really have to work hard as an industry to castrate those calves before three months of age when we're talking about commercial cattle. As far as vaccinations and, and recommendations, nearly 100% of the people surveyed recommend a modified live IBR, infectious bovine rhinotracheitis, and BVD vaccinations. So type 1 and type 2 BVD. So the first thing on the checklist is a, is a modified live IBR BVD type 1 and type 2 vaccination. 67% of the people in the survey are recommending a BRSV and PI3. And if anybody that's given these types of modified live vaccines, you know that all five antigens come in a five-way modified live product. So my recommendation, we got to get that five-way modified live product into these high-risk calves at the time of processing. The next one is the use of a pasturella or a hemolytica, Mannheimia hemolytica. It's hard for me to change the terminology from pasturella to Mannheimia, but it's, it's 10 or 12 years now, so I ought to get over it. But 
Using a Mannheimia vaccine is recommended by 75% of the consulting veterinarians that we surveyed. So that's another vaccine that, or antigen that we want to use at the point in time of processing. No other vaccines besides Clostridium or blackleg, seven-way blackleg, are really recommended. And, and the recommendation on the blackleg vaccines is that if you know that cattle have had one on arrival, they probably don't need one. If you know that they've had one prior to arrival, they probably don't need one on arrival. But if I know that they haven't got one or I don't know the history on those calves, you want to make sure that you get a seven-way clostridial vaccine. Now, if you ban bulls, you need to make sure that the tetanus antigen is in there. So you make sure that you have the clostridium tetanus in the black leg vaccine so it's an eight-way clostridial. Really important on the vaccinations. Nobody's really recommending that we use the lepto vaccines. There was a zero percent response on the Miraxella bovis. Uh, vaccines for pink eye and there was zero response or zero veterinarians indicating that they were using the mycoplasma bovis vaccines at the feed yard level and those are all things that were asked about on a consistent basis. Five-way modified live viral, manheimia, and the black leg or seven-way clostridial vaccine really covers our vaccines on these high-risk calves coming into the feed yard. We're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to wrap up and talk just a little bit more about what we're gonna do with the process of these high-risk calves. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batro 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi there, it's Dr. Dan with your On the Farm Tip, and today we're going to talk about downed animals, specifically beef cows. When we have downed animals, we can't move those animals by dragging them or lifting them with chains. What we have to work with is we have to pick those animals up to move them to a different location. You're going to want to use a, a sled, a low boy, uh, the bucket of a loader, something like that to move those animals. Once you've moved them, you need to make sure that you provide shelter, nutrition, and water for these animals. As they continue to respond and rise, those animals will go back into production. If they don't, make sure that you consult with your local veterinarian and make sure this animal gets the best possible care. You're watching Dr. Thompson here on Doc Talk on your On the Farm Tip, and we'll see you down the road. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids, and a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tarwaters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Hey folks, it's Dr. Dan from Doc Talk and Ag AM in Kansas, and that's my farmer. Be sure to stop in and join us at the Kansas State Fair. We're gonna be down there, we're gonna be walking around, we're gonna be in the birthing center. Join us, come say hi, we can't wait to see you. Hello, I'm Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center, and the horse tip is first aid. What should you have for your horse, especially when you're going out on different rides? Probably need to wait to be the best thing is talk to your veterinarian. Figure out what list of things would be best to have for you and your horse to prevent different problems and to assess and possibly even to treat in certain emergency situations. We all know about vet wrap and we also know about uh, things for bandaging the leg, but don't forget to have maybe even a stethoscope, thermometer, assessment of the, your animal with a phone, taking a picture, being able to set it to your veterinarian to see what the next thing would be to do. So with first aid, talk to your veterinarian and get what you need. 
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Association of Wheat Growers and the Kansas Wheat Commission. Together, we are Kansas Wheat. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Central Kansas on a great day. Glad that you joined us. And we're talking about starting high-risk calves as we're getting ready for the calf run. And we've talked about moving them from the receiving pen through the processing facility. And we got them in the chute and we've already gone through castration techniques and, and some of the vaccines. People will ask me, which vaccine do you choose? And I say, pick a modified live vaccine. I really don't have a big preference. And that leads me right into our next topic is, is metaphylaxis. And what is metaphylaxis? Metaphylaxis, or control of bovine respiratory disease, is when we use an antibiotic on arrival and we mass treat the group of calves, and we don't know, and, and for the most part, why we call it metaphylaxis instead of prophylaxis, is we have cattle of all different uh, spectrums of the disease process going on. We may have some calves that are subclinically ill with bovine respiratory disease, some that are just starting to get infected, and some that are sick. And so we don't have cattle all prior to being sick or prior to being infected. We have them at different levels of, of the disease process. So people, the first thing they'll say is, is uh, you know, which drug should I use? And again, we have about five or six quality labeled products for metaphylaxis or mass treatment off the truck and they all do a wonderful job. You really need to work with your local practitioner to pick out that drug and, and, and pick the one that's best for you in your area. But I don't have a preference as far as which one I'm gonna utilize. The other thing is, is that people are gonna say, what about the timing of the metaphylaxis? Should I give it right at the time of processing or should I wait two or three weeks when I have that massive outbreak? And, and I'll be honest with you, the research dictates that you're just as well to give those cattle the metaphylaxis right at the time of processing as you are if you would wait one or two weeks and run those calves through the chute again. You decrease the amount of stress, the antibiotics on board, and, 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 and you're going to be doing just as good a job from published research. So, so vaccinations, metaphylaxis, we want to make sure that we do, uh, deworm these animals or use an indecticide. To, to get rid of internal and external parasites, whether it's a pour-on or an injectable product. We, we generally recommend the injectable products, but I have no doubt that, that there are good reasons for using both injectable and the pour-on products. Um, castration, dehorning. If you're gonna dehorn a calf at the time of arrival, we really re recommend that you tip that animal instead of completely removing the horns. I think there's a, a myth going on out there in the country that, that we have to have these horns knocked down to six inches or the length of the ear. Really what, when you talk with the packers and, and things to that nature, just tipping those horns, not worrying about, we can't have these horns that are two foot or these, these corrientes or these longhorn steers being able to go through the facilities. But if you're gonna dehorn, you're gonna make sure that, it's, that we just tip the insensitive part of the, the horn after they've arrived. So I really appreciate you joining me today. We didn't get through all the topics. There's still more to discuss, and we'll continue to do that on Doc Talk and other episodes. Be sure to work with your local practitioner, and if you want to know more about Doc Talk or see some of our archived episodes, go to www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University. I'm sure glad that you joined us. I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.